Joining us now to talk a little bit more about the Kidney Health Initiative is co-chair of the Kidney Health Initiative, Dr. Raymond Harris, as well as members of the board, Dr. Barbara Gillespie and Dr. Catherine Tuttle. Thank you three for being here with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Harris, I want to just get started with you. What is the Kidney Health Initiative? Well, the Kidney Health Initiative, or KEY as we call it, was founded in 2012 as a um, partnership between the ASN and the Food and Drug Administration with the hope that the kidney community would be able to come together in a pre-competitive um, environment in order to help overcome um, barriers to um, development of, of new therapies for our drugs and to catalyze innovation. And so it's been very successful. We now have um, over 100 members, 105 members actually, and it is the largest um, such consortium in the kidney community. And you mentioned bringing the FDA into this. What is the significance of bringing a government partner to the table? Well, it's actually, prior to 2012, there really was a very few um, interactions that people understood about how the FDA worked. And the FDA felt like that they, they were really um, somewhat stymied. And so it was being in a pre-competitive environment, having all of the um, the important um, members of the kidney community there, the stakeholders, whether it's patients, um, patient organizations, um, researchers, investigators, and clinicians, and all of the um, pharmaceutical and device manufacturers together, being able to talk with the FDA in a pre-competitive environment, convened, working together on um, areas that are um, where there are barriers to um, being able to move um, therapies forward, which has been crucial for this whole operation. Dr. Tuttle, you're nodding right yeah, along. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about some of the clinical trials and how Key has impacted the recent clinical trials? Well, it, it has actually really been transformative in terms of the clinical trial environment. And like Dr. Harris said, what was really critical was to bring together all the stakeholders in this game. So certainly it has been the federal agency, FDA, and academicians, but it also importantly includes patient partners, clinicians, and industry, because industry makes the products for patients. And we all really have to come to the table together to, to solve big problems. And working in silos is completely ineffective and obstructive, whereas working together has really facilitated a, 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 a sea change in clinical trials. Um, we're seeing an uh, unprecedented number of different conditions, common and rare, now being addressed, to the point that we even have an investigator shortage, uh, which uh, it needs to be addressed, but there was a time when that wouldn't have even been an issue. So, you know, we're really experiencing a, a resurgence, if you will, in translating science to patients. And um, I think for the first time, we've had an opportunity to have all those voices heard and it, it's really improved uh, the quality as well as the quantity of the work. And most importantly, will hopefully deliver better ways to diagnose, prevent, and treat kidney diseases. And Dr. Gillespie, can you elaborate a little bit more on these patient reported outcomes? Well, you mentioned patients and I'll start there. Um, people often think that patients part in this is just to be participants in trials, but really it starts much earlier than that. And getting the patient perspective, their insight on what matters most, because they are the true experts in their disease, not us clinicians. So when they can speak to sponsors and the FDA earlier and tell them what really matters most to them, that's actually going to evolve and, and change our outcomes um, and how we define outcomes in trials, and that's already happening. So at the Kidney Health Initiative, we've got our Patient and Family Partnership Council, and that really makes us um, accountable to ensure that patients are integrated into everything we do. They serve on the board of directors, they serve on work groups, they also chair work groups, so they are really taking leadership positions. When it comes to PROM and patient-reported outcome measures, they're doing projects. Um, they do this in their lives outside of KHI, but they also help us connect 
us with the work they're doing otherwise. So for example, I'm on the FSGS work group. We're trying to define surrogate endpoints in, in FSGS, but we have a patient subgroup, and that patient group is actually looking at, again, the outcomes that matter to them. So how can we combine the patient insight and, and what they want to see in trials with what the FDA wants to see and really help drugs move along? All right, well clearly a lot of progress in just seven years and wish you nothing but continued progress. Thank you, Thierry, for being here with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.